The following is a presentation of TFNN. It is now time for the Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman, Tiger Technician's Hour. My pleasure to be here in the third hour on a Wednesday, uh, Wednesday, April the 25th. And uh, even more important, uh, there is going to be um, an interesting close here with the huge gap that Apple has made, pushing the queues higher. And we will see in the next, pretty much by the end of the show, we will see whether or not the, the Dow, which is lagging. Remember, we've had a big dichotomy here because some days the Dow was much stronger than the, um, than the S&P or the Qs. All of a sudden today, the S&P and Qs are much stronger than the Dow. And I've been speaking about this as a rotational market and that unless we had two back-to-back -back really strong triple-digit down days, then the usual bear market phase where you get the riptide where, where, where every bit of news, whether it's good news or bad news, is considered to be bad news. Or there is this rotational correction which says that while some stocks are going down, just enough positive stocks are managing to counteract give a counter trend weight. You think of the scales of justice, left side, right side. Just enough stocks are there to be able to uh, withstand the downside pressure and to push the market higher. We're getting fewer and fewer of those stocks, but they are there. Now, what's really important as far as I'm concerned is that I'm going to look at certain chart formations. So first of all, let's do this. Get this out of the way because I'm liable to forget. The Dow is up 66 at 13,070. 13, what I said to my subscribers this morning, my service is the opening call. And in the opening call, uh, I have one chart which is called the overview and market today section. In that, there are five segments. The left side has... The 120-minute Dow chart, which says that if it's able to cross, I have, it says resistance at 1320, 1350, uh, it should be 13,000, 13,020, 13,050, and 1370s. And in fact, um, in my report, I said that the Dow needs decisively close above 13,090s to be able to show that it's demonstrating enough power to break the arch formation in the daily chart. If you're looking at Tiger TV, uh, you'll see that there, I'm pointing right there. That is the arch formation. And so far, you've actually pierced the right side of the ellipse of the arch. And if the Dow is able to break about 13,131.36, that starts leg C to the upside. S&P is the same formation. Now, the S&P never did break under the previous low. In this case, the Dow went below the 12,734 low of March, went to 12,710 on the 10th of April. And that says, yes, you can rally, but you probably won't rally above the previous high, which in this case was 13,297, unless certain conditions are met, number one. Number two, in the S&P, there was a successful pattern uh, of this pattern I call the dreaded H, looks like an H or an arch formation, because the 1340 low of, of March, we went to 1357 on the S&P on the 10th of April. So if the S&P is able to break above 1392.76, today's high is 1390.81, let me do that again. Oh, 13.92.76. Yeah, and today's high is 13.92.81. It'll start leg C up, and that'll be very positive. That means that the consolidation is a high-level sideways consolidation, rotating through stocks that have become extremely overbought. I spoke about all those IBD stocks. I had a whole session, two sessions, in fact, 
in in my uh, Tiger Technicians Hour uh, last week on those very things, especially when Apple was making, ah, let's go to Apple. I'm going to, you know that I'll never get to, uh, I will get to it. Let's see. Apple made a round number high. Remember 644.00. Trade Station had 644.05, but by the end of the day, Almost every service had 644.00 as a round number at peak E on the 10th. Where did it plunge to? It plunged to a round number yesterday, 55500, went underneath the gap of 568.18 in the dreaded H, in the arch formation that we look at in the Chapman Wave. That's that study of the introducing the Chapman Wave methodology where I talk about this H pattern or the arch pattern. It says that if you close Below the left side low, there's a good chance that very quickly there'll be an attempt to get back into the arch formation. And the most obvious left side previous peak, in this case 620.25, should be extremely strong resistance. If it closes above that, you look to the next high, and that'll be all the way to 644 round number. Today's high, 618.00 on Apple. So, so far, these round numbers are doing the trick. It's very important in my work to take every little bit of information that you can get. So, the S&P, SPX.X, is right now at 1385.81, up 1384. Needs to climb above the 1387.61 level to start a leg C to the upside. That'll be very important. But this congealed, this this rectangle formation, it's also an arch, but it's also a rectangle formation, says that unless the S and P's decisively into uh, the the f- 1398 to 1400 area within the next couple of days. It's going to have a tough time breaking that pattern. Weekly is in peak C, same as the Dow. Uh, same as the Dow? The Dow is in... Ha! Ah, peak D. That makes it a little bit more interesting because a peak D says at this point, and look, this is the longest and deepest consolidation you've had, which is what you expect at peak D in the Chapman wave. And the, the Dow went from 13.297 to the low of... 12, 7, 10. So this, as I say, today is very important. It was very important last week on Friday. I said a very critical day. Why? Uh, Wednesday was a critical day, followed up by Friday. Why? Because we are in the area that says arch formations invariably try to test their lows. That would be that uh, 710 area, uh, 12,710 area. The breakout to the upside in the arch formation says watch the close today because if it's in this upper area, if it's above 13,680, 13,710 in the Dow, above 1384, 1385, 80 in the S&P, that's really very good action. 120 minutes shows the breakout of this falling axe formation which says you can get a one-to-one breakout to the upside. So far, really nice action. Now, here's what's important. I've spent a long time, I'm doing years about talking about, yeah, right on my show, my show, that the VIX is to me one of the most important indicators in sentiment that I can find anywhere. It beats bonds, dollar, uh, um, trin, all sorts of things. So if that volatility index remains under 18, it shows me that there is still buying power. When it starts to climb, it goes to maybe the 22 area over the next week if if the market starts to decline and and test that lower side, left side um, support, says to me, You've got to be careful because when the uh, the VIX starts to go into those the twenties, certainly to the mid twenties, we will go down. We, the market, will go down. Now, looking at these indexes, I have what I call the Chapman Wave Trend Gauge. Actually, Richard Arms has developed this trend. I, I've watched Richard Arms' use of this periodically. People have mentioned or sent me emails. I used to follow it much more closely. I find that there are times where. I get a reading based on my indicators that gives me much greater comfort. And I have certain levels that I watch really closely. This indicator has way in the 90% area success rate for the low side to say that there will be a rug pull to the downside. For the last eight months or so, I've been using it as a trend gauge for upside on the trend to tell me that there is going to be a rally 
in the market within two days. It's not the same day, it's, it's within two days. It was really successful, and it showed three days ago that there should be a strong rally. So that's that. I won't get a measurement of that for a long time. It's still in the experimental stage. But believe me, if it has the success of the downside, that's going to be great. Now, here's another thing. In the Dow chart, there's a potential for a one of my least favorite patterns because by the time you recognize it, most of the darn thing has already been done. And that is the head and shoulders pattern. That would take that entire move to the 13,055 high of February of uh, this year down to the 12,734 low, and then the, the, the double top of 13,280, and then 13,297, 2nd of April, back down to 12,710, uh, 12, and then up to the 13,131 area. That's going to be the test, because if you make another arch formation, and you break down, Absolutely, you could get a one-to-one -one decline from the high of 13,297 to the low of 12,710, for, and then that would be your A to B, and then that C to D for me would be 13,131 to the measurement to the downside. So let's just go through the rest. You've got the Qs. Oh, I've got to do this. The Qs. This is so fascinating. How often do you find a gap like this in the Qs? There is an island reversal from the low of yesterday at uh, 64.45, 24th of April, to, from four days ago there was a gap down, and now we've completely obliterated that gap, just went skipping right over it like Jesse Owen in the long jump, and where did it go to? Went to a high today of 66.49, Pulling back here, this is going to be very interesting because I've got a peak E in the weekly, but I do not have a sell signal yet in the weekly because it does not close under the nine period exponential moving average. Wow, this is going to be such a fascinating market. So now we'll go on. Let's go. I, I'm going to skip gold. I'm just going to do the GLD real quickly. I see nothing in gold. I, gold is in a big consolidation with a potential dreaded H pattern in the weekly, the GLD, if, if it closes under 157. If that happens in the 153 area, it will probably be next. But the major up channel so far is still intact. I suspect it's going to break this major up channel support. So I don't want to do that. I want to go to the TLT. That's even more important to me. The TLT bonds, 20-year Lehman uh, T-bond fund, is trading at 116.62. This is making a high-level consolidation so far after breaking to a peak E, but that peak E in the chap wave says from the low bar of, a, of March the... 19th at 109.69, it went to 118.41, fifth highest peak in the Chapman wave. And what do you do at this particular point? I had spoken about that downtrend. Remember the, the down channel? Now, here's another technique that I use. I wanted to show, oh, I had so much prepared for today, I don't think I'll ever get to it. The down channel shows in the TLT from the high of of of... It's the 19th of December that we've broken above it and we've closed above it, but there are certain things to look at, and that's going to be very important. 877-927-6648, that's the number to call. Love to hear from you. Basil Chapman, Tiger Technician's Hour. We'll be right back following up with the TLT. You take a hands-on approach to managing your investments, and whether you're bullish or bearish on Chinese stocks, the ETFs from Direction Shares are there to help you magnify your perspective. Bull ETFs for a rising market and bear ETFs for a falling market. Direction Shares gives you the tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary perspective Prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting, and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. TFNN is proud to bring you the cutting edge of investment newsletters. Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks. 
Ken is a top-down investor who lets price and volume in the major stock indices tell him when to be at the market and when to be out. By using his unique blend of fundamental and technical analysis, Ken will protect your hard-earned capital while realizing breakout gains. Go to TFNN.com today, click Investment Newsletters, and get Ken Shree's Ultimate Growth Stocks free for two weeks. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, co-host of The Money Masters with Tom O'Brien, seen daily at TFNN.com, author of Mastering Probabilities, a daily investment and trading newsletter, and teacher of The Money Game. Studies show that three out of five people are afraid for their life in trading these markets, and the number one reason given is fear of loss. Look. Fear stands for false evidence appearing real, and the money game proves it. Lesson number one, don't risk more than 1% of your trading capital on any trade. Why, you ask? Because 35 trades in a row where you risk 50 cents and make a dollar are all you need to double your trading capital versus the 230 losing trades in a row you would need to bring your balance to $100. Let me teach you more about the money game risk-free for 30 days. Go to the homepage of TFNN.com and click on my name, Steve Rhodes, for your 30-day risk-free trial. You were born to be a money master, and I'll teach you how. X-Story Gold Mines, an NYSE Amex-listed company trading under the symbol XG, is slated to be the newest gold-silver producer in Argentina. X-Story is forecast to produce more than $250 million in bullion annually, beginning in 2013, at a cash cost of less than $200 for each ounce of gold produced. That forecast will make X-Story one of the highest margin operators in South America and a sector leader in the mining industry. X-Story has $50 million in its treasury, having spent over $60 million to date on drilling and engineering. The ultimate size of its Argentina discovery could be determined by year-end as results from the six drills operating at the site are fully assessed. To find out more about X-Story Gold Mines and their exciting growth potential, click on their banner on the front page of TFNN.com or check them out on the NYSE Amex under the symbol XG. Here's what people are saying about Tiger TV. Let's go to John in Tampa. Hey, John, what's going on? Hi, Tom. How are you, sir? I'm doing great. You having a good day out there? A wonderful day. I love your Tiger TV. I watch it every day. I'm like a kid in a candy store. Oh, man, I appreciate you out there watching it. How long have you been watching the Tiger TV? I watch it almost a month now, and it's just it's wonderful. It's pretty cool, isn't it? Oh, yes, it's cool. You see the charts and everything. Thanks so much for the hard work. Tiger TV, a great news service from TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Backtech Environmental. For more information, just click the Backtech banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi everyone, Basil Chapman. We're back. I'm showing you here on my CD introducing the Chapman Wave methodology, only available at TFNN. This is slide 39. Repeated characteristics in this particular case, I show arches and I show uh, down, uh, down trend lines. And the red one at the top is, this is the Dow from December 2003, is a descending red line, and under it is a dashed red line, and I call that the sell or repellent zone. Underneath it is a buy zone, and the dashed line is the inside track, it's, a, it's something I developed, and I call, it, I call it the buy zone or the propellant zone. So when you use this particular technique, and it's really easy to do, just Two lines can do it, and you don't need channels. Look, right here is the E-mini. Steve Rhodes was, have a, had a fabulous discussion over the last couple of days on the 30-minute E-minis, and I thought I'd show exactly what he was doing with the, with the, with the, uh, with the Gartley and the butterfly. And I also wanted to show uh, the Fibonacci, but look, you get the Chapman wave went to peak D at 1390, pulls back, goes to 3065.50, runs up to 1383.25 peak F, comes down to a trough E, second uh, cell mode, and then runs up, and now you've got that same inside track. I don't even need to put channel lines. There's no need. It's just a trend line, one trend line, and just below it. And that's been the repellent line. So if the E-minis today can climb over 13, it's, it's, it's an uptrending line. At, above the green line, 1387.50 by the end of the day, that'll be really positive. But, you know, probably we've, the, the, the bulk of the, the buying has been done now. But if the market holds up into the 3 o'clock area, 
there's going to be they could be forced by so that's this is the way it works well when we go back to this particular uh, trend line which in this case happened to also be a channel in the TLT it broke out above it but what's really important is that there is another there are there are fighting channels now uh, sorry fighting techniques one is this arch formation and the only way that's going to be uh, broken is if the TLT can close decisively over 11841 in the next two days because if it slides and it goes underneath that trend line which is set at 114.60, that's, uh, that's very far down, but I'm saying that's, that's the level, then it's going to probably pull back quite a bit more. So that's going to be very important. Now, um, let me just finish up what I was talking about before, uh, and that was that the, that's, uh, gold is down 5 at 16.38, silver's down 0.46 at 30.28, platinum's up 3 at 15.48. Now, high-grade copper, this is very interesting because JJC, the JJC. Yeah, the JJC is trying its best to form some kind of a positive price movement. If the J, which is uh, IPath, DJ, I, AIG, Copper Trust. Now, well, one thing let me mention. It's going to be my pleasure, my honor, actually, to be sitting in tomorrow for um, for Larry Pesavento, uh, as I mentioned in the den just a moment ago. I'm hunting around the house for shoes big enough to be able to put on, to be able to do that kind of work that he does. Just fantastic work. But I'll do the best I can within the chat wave context and within our channels and arches, etc., and, and in the waveform, going from peak A to peak B to peak C, etc. Now, the high-grade copper is important because if high-grade copper in the monthly chart, and I'm just going to go to the I'm going to go to the continuous contract 877-927-6648 love to take your calls the, the monthly contract and the weekly are still holding pretty much in the mid midpoint of the recent trading range so if high grade copper doesn't break below 360 so that it tests the 353 200 period exponential moving average but instead in the, by Friday afternoon can close about 37 55 right now it's a 370 this is a continuous contract above the nine period exponential moving average that'll really be positive so let me just do this i want to also go to we've done, done the bonds i've done that done, i think i've done everything this is really what i wanted to show look i when you go through when you go through these different charts on a very long-term basis, if I go through the Dow charts, look at this, Alcoa, looks terrible, can't get out of its own way. AXP, this is a monthly, these are long-term, let me, let me squash it so that I, you can see that I, I go back as long as, I, well, I had to redo a bunch of those charts, I'm still having some of that problem that I had before. But that peak F top in American Express at 65.89, you see the up channel, you see how the discipline of these particular technical indicators, these tools, look how they work. A beautiful up channel, walk in the nine period exponential moving average, plop, it goes right with it. There's the dreaded H. American Express fails back in 2007, plunges from 65.89 to $9.71. And 85%, is that the music? That cannot be the music. It, time cannot go that quickly. It is just not allowed. All right. I'll be back at 877-927-6648. My engine is really upset. There's not a single call there. I've got to have some calls. Dow's up 81, S&P's up 50. I'll be back with those calls, I hope, straight after this. At Tiger Metal Exchange, we pay you more for converting your jewelry to cash. Let's go to uh, Brian in New Jersey. Hey, Brian, what's going on? Hey, Tom, I uh, just want to let you know I did uh, give you some jewelry. Uh, my jeweler offered me uh, about $650. I should get a check in the mail tomorrow for about 1200 At Tiger Metal Exchange, it's all about honesty when converting your jewelry to cash. Okay, let's go to Paul in Florida first. Hey, Paul, what's going on? Well, I want to commend you on the Tiger Metal Exchange. I just did a deal with you guys the other day. 
Oh, good. I'm very happy. <laughs> well, I appreciate it. Now, yeah. did you sell us jewelry or did you buy coins off or something? Yeah, I sold you jewelry. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. See, what we weighed at was less than you guys said, so, you know, you're totally honest. At Tiger Metal Exchange, we give you the tools to value your gold, and it's absolutely free. Call 866-618-8888 or log on to TigerMetalExchange.com. We've created the easiest, safest, and most honest cash for gold process. Tiger Metal Exchange. It's the only call you need to make. You've heard Tom O'Brien on the air, and you've always thought about trying out his newsletter, Market Insights. Well, now is the perfect time. For a limited time only, when you sign up for a two-week free trial to Market Insights, we'll send you a free copy of Tom O'Brien's best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System. If you decide to cancel within the two-week trial period, pay absolutely nothing and keep Tom's book as a free gift from us. Tom sends out his daily newsletter each morning by 9.30 a.m. with trade recommendations, including price targets and price stops. As recently as March 21st, Market Insight subscribers closed out a position for more than a 25% profit in just over two weeks. To get your two-week free trial to Market Insights, along with your free copy of The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Supplies are limited for this one-of-a-kind special, so act today and don't let this opportunity pass you by. Offer only valid for new subscribers. In the world of financial markets, there's a new player in town with an exciting new way to trade the markets. Nadex now offers binary options as well as bull spreads in a wide range of indices along with commodity and forex markets. With as little as $100, you can gain access to a new way to trade global financial markets while guaranteeing that your risk will always be capped. Nadex allows you to multiply your trading opportunities in ways never imagined before and access markets you once thought were out of reach with short-term trading opportunities available including binary options expiring each hour the market is open nadex allows you to take advantage of a variety of market conditions regardless of volatility or market direction now is the time to take advantage of this exciting new market don't let this trading opportunity pass you by open your account today by clicking on the nadex banner on the front page of tfnn.com nadex a better way to trade what type of investor are you? Conservative, moderate, or aggressive? No matter your investor personality, your overall portfolio should reflect your financial goals, time horizon, and your risk tolerance. Help ensure your portfolio is appropriately invested with an asset allocation plan from Morgan Stanley Smith Barney. Simply picking the right stocks is not enough. Research has shown that choosing the right proportion of stocks, bonds, and cash is essential to the success of your long-term investments. Morgan Stanley Smith Barney believes that a carefully selected portfolio can lower volatility and increase investment return potential. Find out about what asset allocation location and the Morgan Stanley Smith Barney financial advisor can do for you. Call Angela O'Brien, first vice president and certified financial planner of the Clearwater Florida branch at 727-441-6108 today to discuss your personal financial needs. Asset allocation does not assure a profit or protect against loss in declining financial markets. Investments and services are offered through Morgan Stanley Smith Barney LLC. Member SIPC. This segment is brought to you by Harmony Gold. For more information, just click the Harmony Gold banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman. We're back. Dow's up 74. P is up 14 and a half. Um, I was going to tell the story about the circulatory breathing, but instead I want to just go to these charts. Look at these long-term charts that I'm showing here. The gold continuous contract has almost certainly, I, I have to call this a peak F. I've got F slash B, but there's enough evidence now to say that it's a peak F, and the chap wave of peak F is where there are serious repercussions in time and price, and lo and behold, that's exactly what you can see from the 1907, well, it's a continuous contract. The price has probably changed already. Oh, I made a mistake there. Let me get rid of that. So, uh, there. From that high of the uh, 9th, from September 2000, um, there's a potential H pattern uh, unfolding. If, if the gold continuous contract closes under 1538, we will be going lower to the major trend line. This goes back to 2003. And that would say that the support, it will be underneath, it will be undercutting that support as well. Um, if you look at silver, 
And uh, Dan from Atlanta, Austin, the dinner, if I look at silver, that's a peak E. And you remember I said until the stochastic, until the fast-moving average of the MACD starts to give me an M formation and breaks down, there was strength. And that's the strength that you saw that went into the peak A- minus in that rebound back into June, uh, August of 2011. I have the same pattern here. I think silver's coming down, gold's coming, coming down. So, hey, wait a minute. So, so going to the SLV... Uh, if I showed you the SIP, that's the silver contract itself, that was a clear peak E on the 11th of uh, April of 2011. And now there's a down channel forming. And that down ch channel is saying that if I was to do that same technique, if I call that green, meaning if it broke above this, that's positive, and inside it I had to put in another, well, like that. There you are. That says that silver should have tremendous resistance in the next month. It will be in the 3240 area. It breaks out if it goes above 3450 in the month of eight, in May. If it breaks down and closes under the candle of last of January, underneath 2874 in the continuous contract, it's going lower. But then you say, wait a minute. The dollar. What's going on with the dollar? The dollar is in a sideways formation. This is the quickest you've gone from peak A to peak B to peak C, and now it's just holding the nine period exponential moving average. The stochastic's only at 71% in the monthly ch uh, chart. Until it gets to 80, oh, 80 and higher, so, uh, the dollar is just stuck. And I do believe that the Fed is still busy trying to keep the dollar lower, and that it's wheel spinning, that the dollar should be having much more strength with gold this week. And look at the EURUSD. That's the euro. Uh, actually, I'll do all this, these things tomorrow when I do Larry's show. Um, so let's go on. Let's go back. Now, what I was looking at is if you look at the SPX, Dot X. Now, I could have gone through all the Dow charts and a whole bunch, but if you look at the SPX, the S&P 500 index, it's climbed in a leg E. Now, you remember that I had shown this particular chart. Wow, I wonder if I can find it. Let me see, because it's really important. You know, to put things in perspective, sometimes you need to make it as easy as possible, and other times you want to not make it difficult, but you want to say, what else can I look at? Well, this chart to me is just clear as daylight. If you look at this chart with only the channel lines and the inside track buy, mostly they, they buy zones in, rather than sell zones, cal zones that is, um, you will see that from 1994 the S&P ran in this up channel to two beautiful buy modes to March of 2000, uh, 2000 at 1552, so 435 to 1552, comes down in a beautiful down channel. Then it breaks it when it's made the law of 768 in October of 2002. It breaks it and it goes back into two buy modes on the upside to another peak and this, in this case, is two, a series of two peak E's, just slightly above the peak D, at 1576, and that was, I didn't put the date, that was October of 2007. Surely you should remember that. 10. Oh, 7. And then look what happens. Beautiful down channel. And that down channel remains intact until 666.79, March of 2009. And it's run up in this beautiful up channel. There's not a single sign yet. I've got to emphasize yet that this is either peak E, uh, leg E, because we made a new high this month of 1422.38, or brand new A. I can't count that bar as a peak because the low bar cannot also be the high bar in the Chapman wave, except immediately after a peak D within three bars, and it didn't do that. So look what's happened. This is in an up channel. There is not a single sign yet of breaking, even if I had to do this. I don't want to mess this chart up, but I'll put it in. If I put in the mid-channel line right there, until the S&P breaks on a close, 1328, even the mid-channel support is intact so far. I do not want to get bearish. Uh, this is monthly, I'm talking about longer term, until I see breakdowns, and I don't see it just yet. Hey, we've got a few days to go before the end of April. Anything can happen. But when I go back to those charts, I'm looking at the long term. Now let's look at the Qs. The Qs have... 
<coughs> and you look at the Qs if it's so messy. Let me go to the Comp Index. Let me go to the NDX Index. I don't want to get rid of that notation. Okay, the NDX says this could be a new leg G or B. I'm going to just... Because I don't have any sign yet to call it a G, I'm calling it a leg B. That is really positive. So it says that in the long term, you've got the left side. You don't have any peaks, but you do have the cross to the negative side of um, the high of 33.69 back in November of 2000. And the high so far is right here at about the... 26, uh, sorry, 2710 area, let me just double check, 2794, 2795. Now, there's something else I'll talk about is that two parallel highs with slightly, fractionally slightly lower right side peak is something to watch, but not when it's slightly higher. So, I'll get into that, but first we've got a caller right here waiting online. We've got Ari in Arcadia. Hi, Ari. How are you? I'm doing very well, Basil. Good. You once said something that intrigued me. You said, I have some people who use the Chapman Wave that only get in on the C Wave. Yes. And so I have a stock, IYR, and it's making the C Wave now on the daily. Do they get in when it just breaks out, or do they get in on the uh, Actually, I probably said they only get in when it breaks B, because you've still got C to D to come. Where if I said C, there's a particular oh, technique that said, I use. You said as it's forming C. So uh, as yes. It's form, yes, that's right. As it's forming C, meaning that as, as the high of B, let's say peak A is 20 and it pulls back. Peak B is 21 and it pulls back. The moment it goes to 21.01, they immediately buy because leg C should be quite strong and all you do is you, you put your buy in one penny above and then you immediately put in a stop, a trading stop. And as it closes, hopefully above peak B, you can then have time to say, okay, great, now I'm in this position, I can widen the stop, add another position, or I'll just keep this position and you can manage the stop. But what it says is, not only should you go to C, you should still go to D. So yes, clarifies exactly what you're talking about. If so, you look at IYR now that just, just crossed C today, Okay. forming C today, Wait a minute, I, but IYR is at eleven dollars and ninety eight cents. It's no, no, no. It's sixty three dollars. IYR. In the oh, gold. I, I, I put A. Okay, um, our, our, our engineer and I heard is it is an A, but I'm going to put down AYR because this is an interesting chart. So let me go AY. Oh, IYR. That's the REITs. Okay, IYR. Yeah, you know. I missed out badly on this on the REITs. I had the signal. I mentioned it in my report. I, I wanted to buy the RQI, which had the same kind of pattern. I even spoke about it the other day. So this is what I'm looking at. And this goes to the rotational aspect of this market. If you look, I was going to get to the IYR, which is, folks, this is the Dow Jones U.S. REITs Index Trust iShares. And what it's done is it made a high of round number nine. Oops. It made, it made a 94.99 high February of 2007. But within it, it opened for the month at 91 round number. And then it had, it, my rule of thumb is if in a particular instance where I'm getting a leg E or an F, especially if it's a monthly, if there's a round number anywhere, open, close, low, high, I make a note of the round number. If it closes under that round number, Beware, because it come, could come down sharply. So now let me say to you, first of all, did you get in? Uh, this is leg C. So what happened, folks, 62.78 was peak C. Oh, let me just explain for those who are new to this. If you're looking at my charts, there's a simple methodology in the Chapman Wave. It's called identify the most obvious lowest low bar from which you can start a buy signal. In this case, 59.64 on the 10th of April. Apple was making its high. At 644, the IYR was making a low at 59.64, and then it ran up in a single leg to leg A at 62.49 on the 17th. Pull back. It was still under the double top of 
and then it broke out by one penny, went to 62.78 on the 20th of April, pulled back, that's still under the previous high, pulled back, held the nine period exponential moving the average, boop, the, the stochastic goes over 80, 85%, the MACD uh, goes up, and now yeah, you've got yourself. This is what I mean, that when B point breaks, that's peak A, peak B. This is not the A, B equals C, D. This is peak A, peak B breaks. You usually have a very nice upside move, and that's what you've got. Are you in this? No. I, I should have got went in yesterday, but I would have bought on a retracement of a B. But I'm trying to get this... As, as C's formed. Yes. So now let, let me explain something to you. What's very important about this, I have in my monthly chart the chance that this is either brand new leg A or it's the leftover G. But it's above the nine period moving average. It is this, the MACD is flat. And what happens in a flat MACD is it maintains the previous major signal. So that would say having gone above 63, it negates the sell signal of uh, July of last year. And this is a brand new buy signal. It's held the 200 period. Look at that 200 period. What a beautiful indicator that 200 period moving average is. And the MACD's at 85%. I love this. All I'm going to say to you is, Ari, I would do a little nibbling. If you can just maybe just start a position here, get a real feel for it. If it pulls back and it doesn't fill the gap off today of 62.76 by, say, afternoon Friday morning, uh, then you've got a lot of comfort because this leg C could, in fact, extend. Then it should pull back and then make leg D. But my weekly chart is saying, hey, this is very nice. So this is this is this is a very nice move. Um, let me go. Oh, and the 120-minute chart is in leg B to the upside. Ari, I like this. Okay, I appreciate it, Basil. Good. Thank you very much for calling. And your support should be um, at 62.68 on the 120-minute chart. That should be very good support. So thank you very much for calling. Thank you. Let's go to K. Rico in Costa Rica. Hi, K. Rico. How are you? Hey, good morning. I'm fine. Uh, you know, the gentleman uh, that you were just talking to with the IYR, yes. that's, uh, they pay a nice dividend for listeners' uh, information. Absolutely. The REITs, yeah, absolutely. I meant to mention that. I, I slipped my mind. Thank you for bringing that up. You'd like to look at what? Well, you actually gave a... You gave a beautiful rundown of the SPX and the others just right when I called, and I wanted to look at the spider, but mm -hmm. you seem to have a very optimistic uh, viewpoint of uh, from here on going, and uh, that's encouraging for all of us. Well, I, I, I want to, Kerika, I have to put into context. The context is if my support levels, not my, if the Dow or the S&P support levels break in the next two days, I have no qualms but to grab a DXD 200% short or to go to the, even the QID. I have no problem with that. But all I'm saying is that the price has to tell me what's, what's, what's happening. And Larry is coming up next, and Larry says, trade what you see. And what I'm seeing is that if I look at the SPY, the fact that, that it's gone back, you know, my theory is that in, like the tide, once the tide has turned, you pretty much know. And if the tide has really turned for the market, we shouldn't have these very sharp spikes to the upside. Everything should be down. We should have had three triple-digit moves to the downside. The Dow should be trading right now at 12,560. The S&P should be way down at about uh, 1348 or something like that. So I'm looking at this and I believe that there's a rotation going on. So let me explain to you what I'm looking at, what would, how I'm trying to put the whole package together. Do you mind holding? See, no problem. No problem. Okay, great. We've got Kay, Kay, Kay Rico from Costa Rica on the line. And, I, I, you know, I look at those pictures of Costa Rica. They look so beautiful. There's, there's such beauty there. I know there's poverty, but the natural beauty is just fantastic. I'll be back. Put the power of the Chapman Wave methodology to work for you. No matter what market you trade, what time frame you trade in, or your trading style, the opening call, Basil Chapman's daily market newsletter, is bursting with the information and trades you need to become a more successful trader. I've been using Basil Chapman's Chapman Wave method. 
methodology for several years now. His Chapman Wave can be used for any time period for not only equities, but futures, currencies, commodities. I've been also a subscriber of his opening call, which I find an invaluable tool to help me analyze the potential of the market each day. He gives you opportunities to go short and long. It includes recommendations on stocks. I strongly recommend people using the Chapman Wave and very, very strongly support the use of his opening call. To find out more about Basil Chapman and his Chapman Wave methodology, and to get your two-week free trial of the opening call, a $64 value, visit TFNN.com today. In just December of last year, the price of gold was down over 10%. In today's highly volatile gold market, you need someone in your corner that understands the complex relationships that exist within the price of gold, as well as within a variety of gold equities. Whether it's the South African gold miners and knowing how the RAND dollar relationship will affect their bottom line, or understanding how John Paulson's $5 billion trade in the GLD can move the market, Tom O'Brien gives you the direction you need to become a a better trader each week in his newsletter, The Gold Report. With over 20 individual equities covered and almost another 20 on the potential watch list each week, in addition to covering the XAU, HUI, GLD, and dollar, The Gold Report is a great source for any trader that is looking to be diversified in today's volatile gold market. For your 30-day free trial to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report, log on to TFNN.com today. Don't miss out on this great offer. Act now. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Great Basin Gold is a mining company engaged in the exploration and development of two emerging gold properties in Nevada and South Africa with a total resource base of more than 23 million gold ounces. Great Basin Fernstone Mine in South Africa opened in February of this year with a resource of 20 million gold ounces, becoming the first mine to open in the historic Whitwaters Rand Basin in the last 30 years. The Burnstone Mine is projected to have a 25-year mine life and is fully financed with production anticipated to be over 250,000 ounces per year at a cash cost of only $450 per ounce. The Hollister Mine in Nevada became fully integrated in the fourth quarter of 2010 with annual production estimates of 110,000 ounces of gold per year over the eight-year mine life at a cash cost of only $527 per ounce. Great Basin Gold is cash flow positive and trades on the Toronto and New York Stock Exchanges under the symbol GBG. Catch Larry Pesavento, a 40-year veteran trader. He uses pattern recognition, Gartley's, Butterflies, ABC's, and Fibonacci in order to trade these markets. Trade what you see, next on TFNN. Hi everyone, Basil Chapman, and we're on with Kay Rico from Costa Rica. Now, this is really important. I'd spoken the, uh, uh, when, uh, Monday, I think it was, about this book I'm reading on, on Frank Sinatra, Frank, Frankie the Voice. And I, I discussed how he followed Tommy Dorsey because Tommy Dorsey's trombone has this long legato, long phrases, and he wanted to copy it. And I've always spoken about uh, Sinatra's long phrases and how it's so unusual. Well, I try to find those things in the market as well. And you can use certain indicators to do that. Well, if you want a long phrase, look at the way the nine period exponential moving average in the weekly is acting. And if the on Friday at 4 o'clock this week, if the S&P, I don't want to, tr to stop on the, uh, on the 9 EMA at 137.80. If the SPY 
is able to climb once again above it. It's only one week in this weekly chart that has closed underneath it since it broke out the week of the 23rd of, of December. This is the SPY, the, the SPIDER contract, S&P SPIDER. If it can get back above it and if it's able to close anywhere around 139.30, that will say there's a chance that that long breath, that long sustained move, like as happened in the monthly chart when it broke, uh, uh, we, we were watching it uh, before when it broke in from September of 2010 and it ran all the way up using that 9 EMA. Well, if it's able to do that, that's going to be very positive. So I'm saying there's a rotation going on. The uh, Alexions and the price lines, etc., even Apple, if it doesn't break 644, even if it doesn't break 624 in the next week or in the next three days, could in fact take a digestive period. You might find that there are stocks, maybe a GE, maybe some of the, the Dow type stocks that have hold, held really well, with, have given very good outlooks are the ones that, will, that the money managers will gravitate into. Therefore, you can keep the market sustained on the upside. I would not be positive at all if the SPY closes under 135.76. Let's say 135.50. That's that dreaded H pattern in the, in the weekly chart. I suspect that the, the MACD will turn negative and the stochastic will turn negative. It is already at 74%. For the stochastic to come back to positive, the SPY would have to climb above 142.21. That's a tall order. I'm saying to the market, show me. And at this particular point, what I have my, in my opening call, we are mostly on the long side. We have core positions that are holding very well. I try to add to it uh, for short-term trades, which are and aren't working. Actually, one's working out very nicely so far. But I have a short position which we wanted to add to this morning because I think it's one of those former great stocks on the, on the, in the market that the tide has changed. I've identified that long breath as being down, and I suspect that this has given us maybe almost 10% to the downside. I suspect it's going to be more than to the 15 or 20%. So, okay, Rika, it's the longer term that I'm looking at right now in terms of intermediate-term trades. If the, if the SPY, which has already used up three weeks since its recent uh, high, starts to break down by Monday morning, maybe Tuesday morning, let's say Monday afternoon, Tuesday morning, if the SPY is now trading at, say, 137.16, it's at 138.70, then I'm going to say, hmm, back under the 9 EMA, you might finish the week lower. So my positive outlook is a rotational outlook. Specifically, I think that many of the IBD top 20, let alone the top 50, are vulnerable to a lot of a digestive time and price movement to the downside. And that means that the weight of evidence is that the upside might be fairly limited, but in certain cases it might also be very limited to the downside. So the parameters to watch as we wrap up, I will tell you right now, for the Dow, the Dow closed below 12,850 in the next two days. I will be, I'll be prepared to go very shorter term. And if it closes above 13,130, that to me is a positive. Hope that helped you, Rico. Thank you. Muchas gracias. Thank you very much. Gracias to you. Folks, I'll be back tomorrow for Larry's show.